We hope you're having a good weekend, and please forgive the delay in posting this. Uh, allergies got the better of me yesterday, so this is what I could pull off. Maybe you've had the experience of, of fumbling for a word, trying to find a word that you couldn't quite get your hands around. I, this happened to me yesterday when I uh, I got a truck cover put on my the back of my, my F-150, and... Um, I got home and I went to open the cover and I, I got grabbed the the tailgate to pull it back and it would not move. And, and so I tried it for a few times and I realized like this is a problem. So I called the guys uh, who had installed it, a company down in Columbia, and I started describing what was happening. And the person who answered the phone was not forthright with saying, oh yeah, let's bring it on and we'll, we'll deal with it. I was explaining the problem, saying, no, I really do need to bring this in. I need to be able to lower my tailgate. And I got to the point where I was trying to, I couldn't find the word. What is it you pull on on the back of a tailgate to, to drop the tailgate? Is it a handle? Is it a lever? What do, what do you call that? I don't know. I, but I just whiffed on it for a moment. And I, he said, yeah, just bring it in. We'll, we'll take care of it. Okay, great. But there was a, that was one of those moments where like I just couldn't quite find the right word. And um, I was thinking about that as I was reading what, we're looking at this this weekend for Pentecost, uh, this this trying to find the right word. Uh, when we read the Bible, it is the word of God for us, the people of God. And it was written by people who only had the words they had to use. And so <clears throat> there are moments where it becomes obvious that like, they couldn't quite figure out the exact word. And, and I notice this most often when talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. When uh, talking about, for example, the, the baptism of Jesus, you have the voice from on high that says, this is my son. And uh, that's okay, that's, that's clear. And then there's Jesus who's being baptized, and that's clear. But then what the Gospels tells us is something like a dove descended. It doesn't say a dove. It says something like, as in like, mm, what was it? Was it a cloud? It wasn't like a cloud. Like, was it an eagle? You know, it wasn't like an eagle. Like, what, what was it? It's like a dove. I don't know. That's the best I can do. And I have a sense that, like, I probably would have picked a different word. That's the word that they picked because they were there, and those were the words that they had to work with then. And so the work of the Holy Spirit, it's like a dove coming down on Jesus in his baptism. And then um, in Pentecost, this is, happens again. In Pentecost, we read of the people gathered for this, this religious festival. Pentecost is the festival that's celebrated after Passover. Um, and so they're gathered together for this big worship moment. And the wind blew in something like tongues of fire. It doesn't say tongues of fire. It, tongues like fire. And that's a crucial difference. Like if you had walked in on Pentecost happening, you would not have walked in and, and like seen people like holding Zippos over their heads and have flames come out or like just there, there wasn't actually flame happening here. It doesn't say fire. It says flames. It, it was tongues like fire. No actual fire. It's like fire. <sighs> and so what do we make of this? It's always been a challenge trying to make sense of, well, at least for me, to make sense of Pentecost. How do I understand this? It's something like fire. Well, how is the movement of the Holy Spirit like fire? How do we understand this? <clears throat> well, let's think about fire. Like, is the work of the Holy Spirit like like a fire that's burned down in the, the embers and the coals? I'm thinking of a fire when, uh, when it's perfect for roasting marshmallows. The, the type of fire when people are sort of huddled around it because they want to stay warm as the chill of the night comes in. Like, is the work of the Spirit like that? It's like fire. It's like the this fire that's burned down and yes that's i think that's true i think that's good like if the the fire that uh keeps you warm keeps you uh keeps you going keeps you have a sense of hope right that's good like so maybe the work of the spirits like fire in that way that it's the reassurance that we'll get through today that there's something good to look forward to for tomorrow okay it's a little like fire maybe the work of the spirit is also like the fire that you start, that you have a purpose for. Like you light a candle to, to light a room or you light a cooking fire to cook breakfast. That, that's, that's another way to understand fire. You, you're using fire and um, it's directed towards a goal. I'm going to cook some eggs. I'm going to light this room, right? 
talk about uh, to the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah talks about how when uh, he is sent by the Spirit to say some words, to, to proclaim some news, that uh, when he doesn't say what he needs to say, he says, it's like fire in my bones. He doesn't say it's fire in my bones. He says it's like fire. Again, that sort of purpose-driven sense that the, the fire drives and moves and has a purpose. Like, that, that gets me, right? Malachi, Malachi 3, the prophet Malachi talks about how God acts, and it's like a refiner's fire, a fire that purifies. And we talk about refineries today. A refinery takes the sludge that comes out of the ground, and it refines it, and it purifies it so that what comes out of the other side... Of a refinery is the gas, the, the gas, the octane that we use to fuel our cars. And so, yeah, the movement of the spirit is like fire. It's, it can be like the fire that is the purpose-driven fire that transforms. You threw an, When I threw an egg in the skillet on my overcooking fire, that egg is changed. It's cooked, which is good. Right? In the same way, when we gather together for the purpose of, uh, of worship, we are changed. We light a candle to mark that we're worshiping together. We we gather when we we have when we do something with a purpose that's devoted towards God's. So we're we're assuming and experiencing and realizing that the Spirit will move in that moment. And our studies, our service, our prayers uh, are how the Spirit partnering with the Spirit to like fire transform and purify who we are. So, okay, the Holy Spirit's like like fire. Holy Spirit's like fire. We talk about the biggest type of fire. Start, having, start talking about a bonfire. A bonfire, um, an event, you have an event. The family is gathering. It's the end of the week of camp, something like that. This is the type of fire that we see when um, Elijah confronts the 450 prophets of Baal who are le leading the kingdom of Israel astray. And so this fire uh, comes down and burns up the offering. And so the whole nation can see uh, what what's true and what's real like this sort of major moment and that's what we're looking at with pentecost like pentecost was a major moment uh of worship it's a whole it's a festival and, and so we expect the fire to move something to happen at, at that t time and, and so it changes the the future based on that they've gathered together in the same way the the prophet uh elijah directs the people back towards god and and the Pentecost, the fire moves, something like fire moves, and, and the church goes out and talk, talks to people, and it's a major event. And we experience that in our lives when we go forward to be baptized, or we bring someone to church who joins the church, or we, we adopt a child because children need to be loved and served. Like these major moments where we act, we act on the call of the Holy Spirit. So what's interesting about all of this is to say, like, the, the spirit moves, it's like fire. Yeah, it's like fire. It's the warmth of reassuring that, that our, the faith is true and real. It's the purpose-driven transformation that happens over time, the fire that cooks, right? It's the bonfire that changes. It's a big deal. It's a big event. Like, these are all true. And if we look at what happens next in the book of Acts, the church focuses on one of those types of fire, right? It focuses on the second. It focuses on the intentional burning, the intentional, like, this is how we're going to use fire to transform people. What happens next in the book of Acts is they they start gathering together. Those who welcomed his message were baptized, Peter's message, and that day about 3,000 per persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers, and then as any had need, they sold and they took care of those in need. And so that's what the early church does. Like after this Pentecost event, um, they didn't just go back next Sunday and expect another Pentecost. They went back next Sunday and said, okay, now that you're part of this, we're going to study the disciples' teaching, read the Bible, pray, we're going to be together, and we're going to serve. And if that sounds like the life of the church today, well, it is. That's where the way that we experience God changing us day in and day out. This is wonderful news that it's happening, and uh, it's fascinating to see. Like, that's the fire that they can choose, and that's the fire they can sort of be in the most control with. We're going to choose to devote this time, this fire, this experience to what God's going to do. And, and it's a commitment to people's ability to change, which is good that people can change it is worth paying attention 
is a commitment to um, being partners with God. We're going to do this on a regular and ongoing basis. And when those big moments ha happen, like Pentecost or for us Easter and Christmas, like that's when we might look for something bigger to happen. And right now, day by day, we're going to be focused on the thing we can't control, the thing we can't do. We're going to focus on um, what we can do to put ourselves in the presence of the Holy Spirit, knowing that we will then be prepared for the bonfires. And the way if you want to be warm in the night, you start a fire in the afternoon. Right? If you want to have the warmth, the reassurance that gets you through today, that happens when well, you think about fire. You start a fire, the way to get to embers and coals is you start a fire. Now, you intend to do it. Right? If I want the warmth of the night, I have to stop and pay attention to the, the starting that fire now. And in the same way, if we want the warmth and the reassurance and the sense of, 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 of directionality that we're going somewhere and that life is worth the living, like the way we do that is by intending we, we to stop and pay attention to prayer, to worship, to study, to service. And that's where we'll find in the long run, we get the warmth and what we need to sustain us. What I'm sure of looking at how the Holy Spirit works is that I'm never going to fully understand it, but yes, it is something like fire. And as someone who likes to play with fire, I appreciate what uh, the Spirit does. That it, when we are working with the Spirit, it transforms us. And the other stuff that happens, the warmth and the assurance, the bonfires and the major transformations, they'll happen when they happen. And our part is to offer what we can do today and every Sunday and every day. Amen.